Well, holy greetings to you, brothers and sisters. Good morning and God bless you. This is Scott Bradley and this is the Rivers of Life Inspiration Broadcast. We're grateful once again for you that have tuned us into this day, a day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and glad in it. I'd like to invite you to come on in wherever you are, whether you are near or far. Come on in. We've got a word to share with you today. Uh, I want to encourage you as you're coming in to please hit the share button. Let other people know that we're on and let us know where you are viewing from. So as we are coming in now, as we are giving God the praise, as Brother Andre is singing that song, Praises, we are praising the Lord because praise is comely in His sight. God inhabits the praise of His people. And do you not realize that when we praise God, we invite God, we invite His presence to where we are as evidence of the Scripture. So regardless of your situation, Regardless of your circumstance, regardless of where you are, what you're dealing with, give God praise because he will come in to your presence to help you go even through your valleys and your shadows of death, to help you go through your trials, your tests, your tribulations, whatever you need, give God the praise, give God the glory, and he will be there for you. God bless you. All right. Thank you, Brother Andre. Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord again for what he is doing, for the great things that the Lord is doing uh, in our lives. We want to start this off as we always do. To encourage you to get our latest book, The Bible, Basketball, and the Bulls. This was my 37 years as the Chicago Bulls team chaplain, as you all have often heard me talk about. Everybody who's, who's read this, I've, I've, not, I've yet to get one negative feedback. Now, maybe they just haven't said anything, but every person that has read this has come back to me and said how much they enjoyed it, how much uh, they got insight. Uh, they, they, the, as a matter of fact, I had a fellow... Uh, who said, I didn't realize you were that involved as chaplain. But yes, I was very much involved with the team, ministering to them, sharing with them, sharing with the coaching staff, even called upon by management sometime uh, and established a good relationship with many of the players there. And uh, some of those relationships are still going on today. So we thank the Lord. Again, so get the book. We're asking for a donation of $22.50 for the Bible, basketball, and the Bulls. Also, now again, as you're starting to come in, as you're starting to come in, as I said before, please hit the share button. Let other people know that we're on. And I want to encourage you uh, to encourage other people to tune into this ministry. Uh, spread the word. This is how things grow, by, by word of mouth, by spreading the word. I'm asking you to please spread the word. Let other people know about this ministry. If you're being blessed, if you're enjoying the word, if you're in, in receiving instructions, inspiration, let other people know. Uh, I, I know this one thing, and I'll say this, that, that uh, the thing about modern technology now, much of what we do, much of what others have done, will still be available probably even long after we've gone on to glory. Uh, in fact, I wish this technology existed oh, maybe 100 years ago because there's some folks even in my own family and my ancestors that I would have liked to have the opportunity to see uh, and, and hear them talk. Uh, there were recordings, uh, written recordings, uh, but uh, it's interesting that people generations from now can hear this word. So even though this week it may say uh, 100 people viewed or 200 people viewed, that's just for the week. But in years to come, there may be thousands, who knows, possibly tens of thousands, maybe even millions of people that would view this word long after we've gone to glory. Well, the Lord is good and we glorify and we magnify the name of the Lord. So again, let us know where you are viewing from. We thank God for all of you that are coming in. Uh, I want to say to my friends there in Sierra Leone, Pastor Samine, we're praying for you. He was down for a while, I understand, with pneumonia. I certainly know what that's like. I suffered with pneumonia one time in my life. But we're praying for the saints there, uh, for his recovery, and that the people of God uh, would be strengthened. We're looking forward to coming and being with you uh, in a couple of months now. We'll be there, and we're looking forward to it. Also, I want to encourage you to go to our website. Our school of ministry is up and running. The school of ministry is up and running right now. We just posted another lesson yesterday. And of course, we'll be posting lessons every week until we've completed. There are going to be about 24 lessons altogether, 26, 26 lessons altogether. Uh, so we just completed yesterday lesson number 11. Uh, so in the weeks to come, we'll be posting uh, lessons. Uh, we'll post a written lesson as well as yours teaching it. And so again, now remember what we said, that when you uh, complete the lesson, once we once we get it completed, then we're going to uh, take registration. You, you, you're already in advance now if you're going and write, answering the questions now. But once you receive your certificate of completion, after we've completed the entire lesson series, and after we start to post for registration, uh, once you complete the uh, School of Ministry, you will receive a certificate uh, and there are credits 
that can be applied, college credits that can be applied to a college, Bible college that my wife runs. She's a part of, has a satellite to a national Bible college. So we'll be giving you instructions on that, but it is, that means that this is an accredited program. It is an accredited program that we have up and running now. So again, go to my website, scottbradleyministries.vpweb.com. That's Scott Bradley Ministries, one word, dot V is in Victor, P is in Paul, Paul dot com, uh, and uh, click on School of Ministry. And we encourage every one of you to do that. All right, God bless your hearts. Now, uh, I want to uh, share something with you today. Uh, that has been on my heart, well, a couple of days. The Lord gave me something a couple of days ago. You know, usually it, it, I have it a long time, sometime not a long other time. But I want to deal with the spirit of the age, the spirit of the age that we're living in. Uh, we're in an ap ap apostate state in many people. I told you all the other day when I was looking at uh, this particular fellow's talk show and I looked at these people on there, one was... Uh, a, 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 re a reprobate. One was a lesbian bishop. Uh, one, I don't think he was ever saved. He was just, you know, a con man. You know, and the other guy didn't know much about him, but he didn't say nothing uh, in inspiring anyway. And these were on a panel. Panel. And I was listening to the way they talk. You know, it, it is just thing I think we have to understand about the devil. And in, in this case, the devil in folks. The devil makes a lot of sense when he talks. Now, look, we need, might as well just give him that credit. The devil makes a lot of sense. He sounds good. He's convincing. And sometimes to listen to these people, you think, man, that really makes a lot of sense. Man, that's a, man I can get with that. That ain't got something right. Let me tell you something. If the devil was able to convince one third of the angels in heaven to leave heaven, he's got to be, a, he's gotta be a, a pretty sharp fella as far as where he talks and how good he sounds. If the devil could convince Adam and Eve in paradise, to leave paradise. I mean, you think about that. That guy wasn't no, no, just no jive talker. The man made sense. The devil, that spirit made sense. When he got in that serpent and began to talk to Eve, it made a lot of sense. If the devil can convince one of Jesus' disciples who walked with Jesus, who ate with Jesus, who saw the miracles of Jesus, and the devil can convince him to betray Jesus, now, here's a man, many of, many of us would have loved to spend one day with Jesus. Here's a man who spent three and a half years with Jesus, Judas, and convince him to betray him. Don't you know the devil knows how to make sense, to convince people to turn away from the true and the living God? So when you listen to these people and they make sense, don't, be, don't get caught away. Don't be deceived. Don't, don't get caught up in the things that sound good, because what sounds good is not always good. Amen. All right. I want to go to the book of Judges. I've got two passages of scripture that I want to read today. I want to go to the book of Judges. Uh, let's see. Judges, the 16th cha 17th chapter and verse 6. In those days, there was no king in Israel. But every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Let me read that again. In those days, there was no king in Israel. In other words, there was a lack of leadership. But every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Now, that's not always a good thing to do what's right in your own eyes, because in many cases, your own eyes are not right. Your, your thought process is not right. Your logic is not right. Uh, to say, uh, every, you know, I'm just going to do what's, what's right in my own, I'm just going to follow my own conscience, which is what a lot of people are doing now. It's not, if it's ungodly, it's erroneous. It sooner or later is going to lead you to fulfill your own desires and your own lust. Ephesians, the second chapter, in verse 1, verse 1, uh, yes, Ephesians 2 and 1. And you have ye quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. And the word quicken means to make alive, to bring alive. You have ye brought to life, or brought alive. Verse 2, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature children of wrath, even as 
others. And again, I want to use the theme today, the, the spirit of the age. Now, I think there's something that we have to understand, brothers and sisters, and that is that the Bible calls Satan the prince of this world. Uh, you know, he, in other words, he, he's, he has a throne uh, in, in, in the heavens. Now, again, he's not in the, the heaven of God, but there's a spirit world that sets above this world. And spirits influence a lot of things in this world. Spirits influence governments. For you read about when Daniel was on a 21-day fast, and when the angel of the Lord showed up 21 days later, he said, I was hindered by the prince of Persia. Persia, of course, is modern-day Iran. Uh, in other words, that spirit set over that country. And when the angel came to bring Daniel the answer, the spirit withheld him, withstood him. 21 days to the point where the angel had to go back to heaven and get a stronger angel and bring him, help him to get through. There's a spirit world that many people, are, and unfortunately the church world, is not aware of or not even willing to acknowledge. Uh, even the Bible said, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they be of God. Well, now why would the Bible say, believe not every spirit? Evidently, there is more than one kind of spirit. And we're in a spiritual world or a world that is influenced by spirits, and a world is influenced by demonic influence. You know, I was praying uh, not too long ago about this situation, praying about, about the situation that are happening in the world today, particularly in this country of America, uh, the rebellion, uh, the children of disobedience, as the Bible calls them. And even the Bible said to save yourselves from this untoward generation, this generation that is rebellious is what untoward means. Rebellious uh, stands against establishment, stands against uh, principle and law. Uh, it's untoward. It's 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 un uh, it's un uh, 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 trainable. Is what I'm saying. So it's unlearnable uh, it, because it has set itself as a stone against establishment. Well, I'm saying that to say this: that much of what is happening in the world today that we see is influenced by spirits, the spirit world. As I said before, that spirit that's set over Persia. Uh, and there's spirits sitting over that country today. There's spirits of uh, uh, religion uh, that make those countries so wrapped up in religion, and yet they're not following the Lord Jesus Christ. They're wrapped up in religion. And in many cases, some of those countries, they don't differentiate between the religion and politics because the religion is the politics. And so, uh, consequently, people are in bondage. And you need not realize, brothers and sisters, and would you believe if I told you that in many cases, religion has a tendency to bring more bondage than it does liberation, including what we refer to as Christianity. Uh, that's why I like to say that I am a follower of Christ. Uh, I like to consider myself deeper than just a Christian. Now that may be the religious title. Yes, that, that, that may be what the world would call me, but understand the world would call me that because the world called the first church Christians. That was not a, cha a tab uh, that, that the, G the Lord Jesus even used. It's a religious title, but I consider myself a follower or a disciple of Christ which has a deeper and more meaningful, meaningful relationship. You see, uh, again, th 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 these are the things that, that are happening in the society that we're living in today. And we're talking about uh, spirits that set over governments. There are spirits that set over even the United States. Don't fool yourself. This country is not pristine. There are demonic forces that are influencing many of the movements today. There is a spirit of murder. You know, my heart consistently breaks and, and I get angry and sad at the same time. Look like every day on the news I'm hearing of children being killed uh, by crossfire from gangs. Innocent children, in many cases in their own home, in their own bedroom. One child the other day got killed laying in her own bed uh, because somebody was shooting outside with a gun and the bullet comes through the window into the bedroom and kills the child. Those things break my heart. But it's because there is a spirit of murder that is setting over the city. There is sexual perversion, a spirit behind the sexual perversion that is in the world today. Well, I'm saying all of that to say this. The Bible calls these, uh, the recipients of it, children of disobedience because they have turned their hearts away from God and have become disobedient. Hear the word, but rebel against it. Uh, in many cases, what is happening is that the devil has convinced uh, this generation uh, and I'll even go as far as to say, and I've said this, that uh, look like in this day and time that we're living in, we are now probably into our second generation of young people who've never been to church uh, because their parents didn't go. 
know nothing about things like Sunday school, vacation Bible school, things that we had when we were coming up uh, that were, were part of, of, of teaching and training children in the ways of the Lord, uh, in the ways of morality, you know. Uh, and there are a lot, pardon me, there are a lot of things that are influencing our generations today. And it's influencing them in a rebellious state of mind. Uh, you know, I, I said this, mentioned on this the other day, that, you know, look like this generation now is just not fearful of anything. Uh, they don't fear consequence to anything. They don't even fear death. Uh, they do things out of sexual, most of it goes to sexual revolution, to dress the way uh, our young people dress, half naked and, and exposing themselves. And, and uh, oh my God, I mean, I'm talking about young kids, some of the dances they do. Uh, I'm looking at, at, at some of the dances that uh, our, our young people do today. Again, I'm watching it on TV. I don't attend parties or anything, anything like that. But sometimes even in commercials, uh, our young sisters are dancing, uh, gyrating and vibrating and shaking. And it, 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 it's sexually explicit. It's suggestive. That's the spirit of the age because of the spirit of disobedience. Uh, our young people think nothing uh, to get pregnant. Fathers not ready to be fathers uh, as far as their head goes. Now, biologically, yes, but there are too many baby daddies running around out there not responsible to their children. Too many baby mamas and, and uh, oh, my God, young girls getting pregnant and, and, and a generation being raised without a holistic family the way God designed. Homosexuality. And I don't care what you say. It looks like there's a movement now to try to do everything within it can to justify that. Uh, and again, it goes back, and I've listened to some people sometime on the internet, some of these people that are testifying that they're s saved and still gay, and the Lord is ministering to them. And you've got whole gay churches where the pastor's gay, and, and instead of having the first lady, he's got the first gentleman, and his lover, and and, and we're, we're, we're promoting same-sex marriage. And I'm even looking at some of the commercials and how they're subtly uh, 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 putting this into the mind so that this generation will accept this abomination. Well, you see, it's because we're in an age where a leadership, effective leadership, is lacking when it comes to spirituality. Now, let me tell you something. Uh, you can't expect the politicians to be spiritual leaders. You can't expect that. No sense in, you know, even trying to hold that standard to our political leaders. Because you can't expect that out of them. You can't. Uh, many of our politicians are uh, ungodly. Oh, there are some that profess uh, to know the Lord, and, and, and I'm glad. I'm praying for, for our politicians. I'm praying for our president. I'm praying for our government. I, I, I'm praying for them. I, I, and the Bible said to pray for them. The Bible said to pray for those that have rule over you, that we may live a peaceable life. I, I, I'm praying for them. I, I'm praying for our president, and our first lady, and our vice president. I, I'm praying for them here in America. But I cannot expect them to make decisions when it comes to godly character. Because they're politicians. And sometimes the politics is, the day, is like the wind. They go with the flow. The wind is blowing a certain way. The politicians realize if I want to stay popular and keep my political position, I got to go with the wind. So you can't expect anything out of them except what they are, politicians. But here now is the responsibility of the church. The problem that has happened with us, we start to become like what the Bible said that I quoted that there's no king. In other words, there's no leadership is, is basically what it's saying. And people are doing what is right in their own eyes. Well, once again, you can't expect that to be a, 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 uh, a good thing because some people, nothing bothers them. The problem is you have that attitude that has come into the church. You know, uh, brothers and sisters, and I know I talk about this a lot. Now, you're probably tired of hearing me talk about it. Be very honest with you. I'm tired of going over and over, going over it over and over again. But when we jump away from the foundational scriptures and start, as I said on before, get one thing, pull out the Bible, and make a religion out of the whole thing, and neglect everything else, we now become vulnerable to different types of ministering spirits. The problem with this 21st century church, and I speak it as a whole, not denominational organization, the church as a whole, is that we are not aware of the spirit world. You know, uh, I've said this quite often. The older generation was devil conscious. When I was coming up, the older generation was devil conscious. They rebuked the devil out of everything. They called it thing the devil. Well, the reality is, it's true. They probably did give the devil more credit than he deserved. But what am I saying? They were aware of the spirit world. 
This generation has no concept of spiritual work, the spiritual world at all. Demonic forces. The Bible says there are spiritual wickedness in high places. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You've got different demonic forces, as I said before, that set over governments that are behind movements. The gay rights movement, there's a demonic spirit behind it. Because the devil is convinced that this behavior is all right. And, and as I said before, you've got some folks that sound very intelligent. They're very logical. They make a lot of sense. They're saying the Lord is leading them. I was looking at something the other day and that whole woman testified, whole thing about how the Lord leads her, how the Lord talks to her, and how she's, uh, but yet she's gay and she finds nothing wrong with this. And it's a direct contradiction to the Bible. And yet this type of spirit has convinced folk that they're right when they're doing wrong. But again, because the church has gotten away from spirituality and gotten away from the Bible, you know, we take the attitude like the world. Ain't nothing wrong with anything. I'm going to do what's right in my own eyes. You know, what well, the Bible said is, well, I'm not heeding the Bible. That was written a long time ago. I'm going to do what's right in my own eyes. I feel it don't bother me. You know, anytime you get around a person, nothing bothers them. I question if they really know the Lord. Yes, I said it. I'm going to say it again. Anytime you get around a person that can do anything and don't, don't bother me, you know, you're still looking at pornography, but it don't bother me. You're sitting there cussing, cussing like a sailor. Well, don't bother me. You're supposed to be saved and you're getting drunk. Well, don't bother me. You're supposed to be saved and you're in an adulterous relationship with a side chick. Well, it don't bother me. You don't know the Lord. And I'm telling you, and you need to get to know the Lord because when you know the Lord and when God fills you with the Holy Ghost, you get convicted. I can't do these things. That's not good godly character. That's not right as a child of God. I'm falling into the category of children of disobedience. And Paul said, that's what you were. That's what you were before the Lord quickened you. Brought life to you. That's what you were. You were a child of disobedience. Praise the Lord. And so this is what we're dealing with. And this is what we're dealing with. The attitude of the world today. Dealing with disobedience. A spirit of rebellion. One of the things that is happening with the same time. The spirit is the spirit of immorality. Rebellion. But we have no leadership. People are free. And, and you know I've said this before. Fame is a dangerous thing. You know, I feel like this. I would rather be unpopular and be right with God than to have all of the accolades of the world saying how great I am and how wonderful I am and, and oh, he's the best. And, 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 and I, ain't together. I ain't got it together. I'm not right with God. I don't want that. I want to walk with God. I want to be in fellowship with God. I want to have a fellowship with him. I want to be right. And sometimes being right means that the world will ridicule you. Sometimes being right is means that the world will persecute you. I, I took a chart here. I think it's a good time to go to this. I took a chart here uh, that I saw, and, and I want to share it with you because uh, the church uh, from, from its beginning, 2,000 years ago, has gone through a series of, let me see, how can I put this? And, and I, well, I want to say evolution because, you know, that's, General, the general term for evolution means it, it, it um, evolves to something higher. Now, again, I'm not, I don't want to use that because in many cases it has not done that. But when you look at the book of Revelation, it, it's, uh, uh, oh, how can I put this? The change, let me simply say, the changes that the church has gone through is very similar to when the Lord uh, spoke to John in Revelation and, and sent a message to the seven churches of Asia. Uh, Ephesus was the age of the apostolic. In other words, the, 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 the era from uh, 30 to 70 AD, a 70 year period, I'm sorry, 30 to 100, the, the 70 year period after Christ had resurrected was the church of the apostolic. Many of the uh, apostles were living for, for some of that time, had established churches, the, the ministry began to evangelize, uh, the work began to go. So you had the age of the apostolic. From 100 to 312 AD, and again, I didn't write this, I got this from somewhere else. Uh, Smyrna, was the church of persecution. And this is what the church world was going through at that time. For about 200 years, the church, the early church was under persecution. Many of the saints were killed. 
uh, many of the people. In fact, here's an interesting note of the uh, 12 apostles, uh, which, which of course uh, takes Judas out because he's committed suicide and brings Matthias in. Of those 12 apostles, including Apostle Paul, which would have been the 13th, all of them died as a martyr except for John. John was the only one that lived to an old age and died of natural causes. But during the first uh, uh, 100 to 312 AD was uh, the church of Smyrna, the character of Smyrna. And this church faced persecution. Uh, Pergamon uh, is the age of the Roman church. And that age went from 313 to 600. Again, you have the rise of Rome being the center uh, of, of, of Christianity and, and of course, Things begin to rise out of that, one of them being the Catholic Church and the other, those other things. And, and some of the doctrine that was brought forth and actually was a, a merger uh, between um, uh, 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 Christianity and paganism, which is where we got a little, lot of our holidays today. And I won't go into that time, I won't permit that. Uh, after 600, you had uh, th uh, Thyatira, uh, Thy Thyatira, I'm saying it wrong, which was the Dark Ages. This was the age of Jezebel. When the Lord rebuked that church and said, you've let Jezebel come in there and cause the saints to commit fornication. And she calls herself a prophetess. What did the, uh, uh, the, this church represent from 600 to 1517? It represented the dark ages. Because you had a demonic spirit, a false prophetess in the midst of the church. 1517 to 1700, Sardis, the character is Reformation. Reformation. Uh, when you had the Reformation movement, uh, when you had, uh, again, a lot of the, the, the rebellion against the Catholic Church, which had been established so long, when you had uh, the Protestant rise, when you had Martin Luther, among others, uh, the start of the Protestant. Uh, so that was Reformation, 1517 to 1700. The Church of Philadelphia, 1648 until the 21st century, which was missions, missions, uh, again, the, 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 the reaching out to the world, the spreading of the gospel, the preaching, the modern technology that brought us to the age where we could take the gospel all over the world as this simple broadcast is doing. But now here we are in the present. The church world today in the present is Laodicea. Laodicea was lukewarm. This is the age of the church today. We are lukewarm. And that's why Jesus said, if the salt loses its savior, it's good for nothing. The church has lost its power and its influence because we've allowed too much to come into the church and take us away from spirituality. All we're talking about is prosperity. You know, that's a dangerous thing. And I'll tell you right out. And I know y'all hear me talking about that. And wherever here you go with prosperity again, I like prosperity. Well, all of us like to prosper. But that's not what God is, is uh, following the Lord is about. That's not what being saved is about. Because as you all oftentimes heard me say, when we talk about nothing but prosperity, all we're talking about is ministering to the flesh, to the natural man. And the spirituality is dying out. The spirituality is gone. The spirituality, the place where we need to be in God to win the world is gone. Instead, the world has influenced us. Instead of us being the salt of the earth, we've lost our savior, our ability to spread, to influence, to preserve. And so what has happened? The world has now come in to our church, to our dwelling. And we no longer, praise the Lord, uh, are influencing the world. The world is influencing us. And so we've got whole churches full of homosexuals. We've got whole churches where people are not getting married. They're just shacking up and living together. Children out of wedlock. What did Apostle Paul say in the scripture we read? Fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Why? Because we feed the flesh. I've said this, that the one you feed the most is the one that becomes the strongest. And if all you do is feeding the flesh and satisfying the flesh and primping and propping the flesh and making the flesh look good and walk good and smell good and dress good, if that's all you're doing and you've got no spirituality, you're walking in an attitude of death. Because the Bible said to be carnal minded is death. To be spiritual minded is life and peace. Hallelujah. The Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And so because we've got this type of spirit and attitude, it's no wonder that the world makes a lot of sense. I'm saved. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and I'm gay. That's a lie. 
But it makes sense the way they present it, the way the devil talks. I told you, the devil makes a lot of sense when he talks. Well, me and my honey here, we living together. You know, I, I see things that I think are quite interesting now. Uh, when they talk about uh, anniversaries, uh, and my wife and I, in fact, are about to approach 40 years. This December will make 40 years that we've been married. And uh, I look at, uh, see, sometimes even the, the posts on Facebook, and people say things like, uh, we've been married 20 years, we've been together 27 years, we've been married 24, which means the first three years they were just shacking up. That's not God's way. Someone even asked me, uh, how long did we live together before we got married? Or does that include the time y'all lived together? Me and my wife did not live together until we got married. That's God's way. God's way is right. Oh, my God, our time is up here, brothers and sisters. God's way is right. And the problem that has happened is, is that the spirit of the age has made us disobedient. The spirit of the age has caused us to turn away from morality, to turn away from the ways of God. To turn away from biblical standards. And we are walking in disobedience. It's the spirit of the age. But if we're going to walk with God. We've got to turn. Away. From sin. Turn away. From evil. And follow. The ways of God. God bless you my friends. Our time is up. I hope you got something out of that. Uh, please let us know where you're viewing from. Amen. Whether that you're viewing the live recording. Or whether you're viewing the playback. Let us know where you're viewing from. Pray for us. Spread the word about this ministry. God bless you. We thank God for you. I hope we said something today that would encourage you to walk with God, to be aware, to open your eyes. Oh, my God, time is way past me. But look, let's do right. Let's be right. And God will get the glory. God bless.